Welcome everyone to my personal top 10 most unenjoyable games I come across as I was making gameplay videos for my channel. These games have glitches, extremely hard levels and bosses, lack of controls, animal cruelty, and even moments where one would get triggered. Now let's start things off with number 10 on my list. Super Mario Sunshine I thoroughly enjoyed this game and I can't understand why people say that this is the second hardest Mario game ever made. Really the only thing that stops you is figuring out how to complete the last mission on Serena Beach. Scrubbing the electric goo. I could only find out by accident once I got so mad that I came so close and couldn't possibly complete the mission any faster the way I was doing it. So what's the trick? You just... I do... You forget the burn! Hold R and A together for Mega Squirt. That's the only way you can beat this mission. So once I found out, I was all business. All right, Scrub Serena Beach, it's showtime! Yeah, it was exaggerated. I was in the heat of the moment, okay? Worms Open Warfare 1. Quite possibly the crappiest, cheesiest game I've ever seen in my entire life with glitches up the wazoo. I couldn't help but get stuck inside oil drums so very easily, almost no attack I threw made any direct contact, and grenades have super bounciness when I didn't turn the bounce option on? Yeah! Are you kidding me? Oh my- Are you kidding me? The game was easy enough to complete even with these glitches, but I had to mention how many of them there were. Sometimes I couldn't help but laugh. I shoot the grenade downwards! Don't get stuck! There, that's what it was supposed to happen. No! You stupid piece of crap! Freaking Cubert! This was a troll game for sure. I mean, if you make a platformer feel like a third person shooter, you are touched in the head. Then, if you turn a strategy game into chance, you should know where you went wrong. Cubert is a combination of both poor choices listed in game development. The control setup is complicated when you're setting them up for the first time, but then you later realize when you wanted to set up the controls to move horizontally and vertically, you're really moving diagonally. It's a mess. Just look at the bullcrap I went through. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> nope. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Gosh dang it! I think I actually can go as far as I want to. Gosh, these guys are everywhere! Yeah, no kidding! God, the f <laughs> The very first of the Worms series, Worms for the DOS Box. I already hated this game so much for a couple reasons. Bazookas don't have the kind of aerial physics you'd think they'd have. The crosshair doesn't seem to help at all, especially when you can't see it. So, a lot of times when I target an enemy, guess what happened? Then see if you can land it in there and then no! Free! Ah! Why did you do that? Stupid! You did this has got to be the only strategy based game that I know of firsthand where I don't have very much control of anything at all. Let's just forget this ever happened, okay? Skip on down. See the connection. This game is a fusion of Pac Man and Cubert. You have to color all the floor tiles like Cubert, and you have to avoid enemies while navigating like Pac Man. Interesting idea for a game, but is it fun? No! There are too many things you have to dodge, and you can't avoid them until it's too late. Right? And then... Get out of... CAT! Go up! No, why am I... STUPID CAT! My love for animals made me hate this game even more. Why put helpless animals in the road? Why are there cats all over the place? There's a... What the hell was that?! Oh, for God's sake, turn it off! Turn it off! 
Super Mario Bros. 2 for the NES. Now this, I'd say, is one of the very hardest Mario games ever released. You want to know why? First off, some bosses' attack patterns are completely impossible to read, especially when you play the game for the first time. Since NES controllers had very limited response times when you press the buttons in a specific pattern, alongside with the tough enemies, it made the general gameplay very inhumane. I only figured out a couple of things that helped me out throughout the way, but it wasn't enough. And on top of everything else, I get trolled every so often. As you can tell from my expression, I was in hell. Superman 64 is without a doubt the shittiest game ever made on N64. Everybody's made that claim already, and finding out firsthand how terrible it is on requested gameplay by my friend Andrew, my review of the game is that it must be unfinished, for various reasons mentioned in the gameplay. I'm following the rings to where it's leading me. That- What?! I- the, I exited the game by pressing- by pressing start?! Uh, lift the two cars. Wait, what? Hey, what? Lift what? Hey! What the? What the? Um, an arrow shot me that came out of the street. Nobody shot that arrow. The road killed me. Put the police car at the end of the road. At least I can see that message before it goes away. At the end of this road? Am I even going to the right end? Again? Why can't you just have me redo the mission instead of having to redo the entire level from start? Why is the cutscene in a tiny little box like that? Oh, my path is blocked. Right at the very start. Is there something I'm supposed to do on the computer here? Pressing B. Interface key B. What the freak? Okay, I'll punch this door down and find a key. No? You can make it past the stupid laser, but you have to hurt yourself to do it. Okay, I'll pick this guy up. Ah! Throw him! Throw him! The game is lagging, so the input command is laggy also. Oh, this will take forever. How about you just fly through this stupid, this stupid freaking canal? Uh, hallway. It's called a hallway, and including the reasons why everyone else would avoid this game, I will never play this game again, but even so, it's not the most horrible playthrough in my opinion. So let's move on, shall we? As a general rule of thumb, NES games are inhumanely difficult. However, the Three Stooges can murder your expectations of level and round difficulty in the first few minutes of the game. What the freaking ah! We're only on day six, and you're that much faster, and we can't. Wow, this I hate NES games so much. A lot of times, the controls do not respond properly to complete an action. So how do you resolve that issue? <laughs> I'm just button mashing here. That's all I'm doing different. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's it's working. Curly, why couldn't you freaking duck? I don't know how to get any of these guys to duck. This is so stupid. When the three stooges fight amongst each other, it's impossible to tell if Larry and Curly are going to attack Mo, and hitting them is a luck factor, to be honest. I lost another finger. I only got one try left. <laughs> Oh god, Simpsons Wrestling ranked the absolute worst Simpsons game ever made, and I'm inclined to agree as far as the title match against Kang and Kodos goes, because in my experience, this is one of the hardest boss fights throughout any type of game you can think of. For starters, Kang is so big he practically takes up the entire ring, another is his moves are better than almost anyone you can think to pick in the character select. All the energy and health power-ups drop straight on top of him, and his normal attack can reach you from almost any distance. Kang has the advantage in size, speed, power, and technique, so how is it possible to beat him? You got me. However, when I did finally beat him by some crazy miracle, I... Well, let's just say I wasn't humble in victory. YES! TAKE THAT PUNCH! And then we have to go through all of this two more times to be a 100% gameplay? Off, turn it off, for God's sake, turn it off! 
Those games were pretty bad, right? But still, not the very worst in my gaming experience. Before I show you my number one worst game, I'd like to share an honorable mention, I guess. I'm not really sure I can call it that, but I have to say, Super Smash Bros. Melee Event Missions. Just... No. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. 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 Hell no. 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 I refuse. No. No. Literally, when I played these events, I and thousands of other players too, it, it drives one insane. <laughs> Now, without further ado... My absolute hated game in my archive, Mario Pinball Land. This is easily the hardest Bowser boss battle in Mario history. It's next to impossible to beat Bowser in a pinball setting, especially considering what you have to do to beat him. You have to get Mario to spin around in circles to hit the levers and raise the thwomps in the air, then hit a blue switch and drop them to get Bowser to fall on his back, and then attack him, you only have a second to attack him afterwards. But it's not quite that simple, you have to move the flippers at exactly the right time. If you mistime it by even a nanosecond, you'll fall down to spawn and start over. And if that wasn't bad enough, once you think Bowser is down for the count by the thwomps, he turns into a ball and throws you back to spawn and you have to start over again with the thwomps! Oh, you got to be fucking with me! No way! There's just no fucking way! And even if you can beat him by some crazy miracle, do you even get some kind of a special bonus? Maybe an interactive end credits with epic music? You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! So naturally, my expression was this. I can't believe a game that control you this bad exists. With that being said, my final thoughts on the matter was simply this. I'm... I give up. I don't... I don't know what life is anymore. Go to hell, Mario Pinball. Go to hell. If you like this video, everybody, click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and click the playlist to see more Steven the Screwed. And stay tuned for another video I'll post on my channel. Peace out.